Gentlemen, here are eight proven practices that you can implement almost every day that make your life better. Number one, get some water and some oxygen. First thing in the morning, go to your kitchen, get a big old glass of water with some lemon juice in it, about 16 ounces, and drink that baby because you got to get hydrated after eight hours of sleep and it activates your metabolism, get your body going. And some research said that it can bump your metabolism up to as much as 5%. Plus, it, it kind of helps flush all the, the cellular dump and cleansing that happened during the night. So get up, get some water, and then breathe. Now, we might think, well, I'm breathing all the time. What are you talking about? But most of us are breathing. Um, our, our breathing is just too shallow, right? And think about it, especially when you get stressed or, or frustrated or depressed or discouraged or fearful. The movement is interesting. It's subtle, but it's shoulders forward, chest kind of closed, head down. And we get this shallow breathing or stress breathing or working. So big, slow, deep breaths changes the way we feel because the brain operates on oxygen, right? So one way to hit the gas pedal to your brain is just pumping oxygen up through your carotid arteries here and lighten things up. And at a cellular level, the uh, cells do better with oxygen. So practice some deep breathing. You do it first thing in the morning. You do it throughout the day. Anytime you feel stressed or frustrated or bothered or Whatever, anytime there's a transition in your day, just take some deep breaths. And if you can hear them, that's better, right? And just take some big, deep breaths. It feels fantastic. And, you know, change, literally alter your biochemistry and your physiological, mental, and emotional state. It's awesome. So use that. It's, you know, it's simple, really simple to do, really simple not to do. And very few people do it. If you want to go deep into this, you can study some of the Wim Hof breathings out there. But... Every day, get some water with some lemon juice, preferably in the morning, and do some breathing. You just got to feel better, and breathing does that. Number two is related. You got to move your body. And I want to invite you, even challenge you, to move your body vigorously every single day. Now, that can look like any kind of uh, exercise that you love. Preferably, if you like it, you're more likely to do it. And if you have a partner, you're more likely to do it, right? So you got a running buddy. You got somebody to go to the gym with. You're going to do cycling uh, jumping rope, boxing, martial arts, whatever, like move your body and move your body vigorously. Fellas, your body is your vehicle for life. If your vehicle's like out of condition, how are you going to perform in the race, man? Like you're not. So if you've let your body kind of slip and get out of shape and overweight, okay, draw the line right now and say no more. Let's get into the best health and shape of your life and stay there for the rest of your life. So every single day, move your body. Same thing as before. It's like hitting the gas pedal to your brain and your whole body. You're pumping oxygen and blood all over the place. You're moving. It is There, there are benefits that are psychological, physiological, emotional, spiritual. It is good. So just move your body. Then... And, and again, you can kind of switch the order here a little bit, but there's a lot of research that exercising or moving your body first thing in the morning has so many benefits, even for cognitive benefits, learning, right? There's a book called Spark that talks about this fantastic research that if we're moving our body and activating our brains first thing in the morning, we actually learn better, think better, make better decisions, work better, lead better, like the day goes better. So water, oxygen, move that body vigorously. Next is to clear your mind. This can this can happen really quickly, especially if you practice it and you get better at it. You can clear your mind quickly. A lot of us are carrying mental junk, uh, for lack of a better term. And some of it might have been there for years or decades. But sometimes just you pick it up from the day before and you got stuff you're worried about or frustrated about or thinking about. It might even be stupid stuff, a dumb song you just can't get out of your head or a, a movie scene or something you read or heard or you're just replaying this conversation again and again. Man, we just all kinds of crap gets stuck there. So just clear your mind. And do it in the morning. Just kind of just settle it all down. Do it before bed too, fellas. Man, that'll help you sleep better. And a pad of paper next to your bed or whatever, you just write down some thoughts or ideas. Just get them out on paper. That helps your mind settle down. Like, okay, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Or it's processed. It's out. So do it before bed. Do it again in the morning so you have a clear slate. And you can do this throughout the day. And you can get into little practices. It might be a little brief meditation 
or as you get better, I'm telling you, like you can just pause and be like, okay, I'm just clearing my mind. And you might just pick a different activity to do. It's, um, I, I recommend my clients do 50 tens, right? Where you work 50 minutes and then take a 10 minute break, or you can even do 55 five, right? Whatever it is, where you just pause and you do something different, right? You disengage your mind from what you're working on. So then you can come back to it with clarity. Now, that, that's kind of counter conventional. Most guys are like, well, I'm just going to put my head down here. I'm just going to grind for the next four or six or eight hours. That's actually less effective. If you'll stop, just move your body again, do some breathing again, get a healthy snack, do, do another positive activity. Don't get on a scroll or do something dumb. Do a positive activity, disengage, re-engage. The whole strategy here is to be fully engaged or strategically disengaged. But in the morning, get up, clear your mind. Next, fill your mind. So this is number four. Fill your mind with great stuff. You can see in my books here, man, I love books. Books have literally changed my life. I started reading voraciously over 25 years ago, and I've averaged about a book a week for over two decades. Just keep reading. Listen to great books. Listen to great audiobooks. Find some great podcasts. I got a podcast called the Extraordinary Family Life Podcast. It's all about helping men be great husbands and fathers and businessmen and leaders. Like get into that stuff and make sure, like this one's non-negotiable, fellas. Miss a meal if you have to, but do not miss a day of good input. Just fit this into your regular rhythm, your way of being. Make sure you are constantly feeding and filling your mind with good things. Man, I feel I feel so strongly about this that, and I think I can boldly say like this one can be the biggest turning point in your life. Because input determines output. And, and, and too often we're just consuming all kinds of news and all kinds of really biased opinions and political garbage and drama. Like cut that crap out. Life is too good <laughs> and succeeding is too important for you to just be consuming that junk. So cut the crap, period, and replace it with really great input. Man, it'll change the way you think, the way you feel, the way you perform, the way you do life. That's a big one. And I have a I have a full free book list of all my recommended books. You can get that on my website, gregbenning.com. And man, grab that and just start cranking through those books. I'm reading books all the time and listening to tons of audiobooks. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna connect with your wife. So every day you have to have an intentional and proactive connection with your wife. Now, years ago, I realized there's there's two different ways to do connection and, and to do life, to do marriage even. It's transactional or transformational. Transactional is where you go through the transactions. You go through the motions. You, you guys are paying the bills and who's taking the kids where and what are you doing? Oh, I have to do this. And you check in your schedules and you're like, hey, babe, you do that. Oh, thanks for dinner. Thanks for this. Oh, can you pick this up? And it's really transactional. You just kind of go into the motions. And this happens usually after you get married. You kind of get into the, the role of things and the kids come and then work and then the house and then projects. And a lot of marriages, they get transactional and they stay flat. And it's, it's, it's like you're flatlining. You feel like you've lost the spark and the passion and the romance in your marriage. And if your marriage has become transactional, this is my invitation that every single day connect intentionally with your wife. This is a lot of listening <laughs> and good listening, fellas. If you got your phone out, man, you're not listening. I know for a lot of women, including my wife, if I have my phone out in her presence, she treats that thing like it's another woman. Like, don't do it. Be fully engaged, fully present. Have meaningful conversations. Have creative, good dates, fellas, every week at a minimum. In fact, I would, I'd recommend two dates a week where you're all in and you're planning something special. You're doing real things because you've thought about it and you've prepared for it. So connect with your wife every day. Next is connect with the kids. Same thing, man. It's transactional versus transformational. Connect with each child in a meaningful way. Right now with my littles, they love, crazy love jumping on the trampoline with me. So every single day I jump on the tramp with them and every single night I read a book to them in their bedroom. That's at a minimum. With my older kids, they each have specific things we like to do together from 
the woodworking projects to Krav Maga to uh, playing volleyball, practicing volleyball with my daughters, uh, conversations, whatever it is, like make sure you're connecting with each of your kids every day. It will make a gigantic positive difference in all of your relationships. Next thing, this is number seven. You have to practice your craft, right? Now you know that, but how many of you, if, if you were to show me your schedule right now, your schedule reflects skill development. You have to schedule skill development. And, and, and the, the goal here is that you become an absolute master and you lead your field. So whatever your chosen craft is, whatever your art is, whatever your magic is, whatever your music is, you have to practice it and you have to cultivate skill development. The, the, the key is you want to be the best or one of the best. Be the best in your industry. If you're going to do something, do it well. If you, if you have no intention of doing it well, then man, don't do it. It's not worth it. So whatever that thing is, and it can be multiple things, right? Really, really in life, fellas, if we're going to live an extraordinary life, we have to become really good at several things. Practice your craft. And it can be you know, social skills, communication, leadership. It can be investing. It can be strategic thinking. It can be whatever your craft is. If you're a, a surgeon or a marketer or an entrepreneur, like what, what, is, what is that thing? What is your craft? Like dial that in, nail it. Like if you became one of the absolute best, what, what thing would make the biggest difference? Right? Or what do you love? What do you want to be great at? What's that one thing that you just want to absolutely excel in? Pick that thing, practice your craft, make sure your schedule reflects skill development. And then the last thing, number eight, fellas, is to train for greatness. Ooh, this is one of the, well, the one, I, one of the sections I love the most in my Be The Man Masterclass and Tribe. It's all about training, gentlemen. Everything in life comes down to training. Everything you are right now and everything you will be in the future comes down to training. Everything your kids will be is how you are training them right now. It's all training. It's all conditioning. From the, the, the way we get out of bed like we've been talking about, the way we go to bed, the way we interact with people, the way we go through our habits and routines and patterns and rituals, it's all about training. The quality of your sleep to the quality of sex to the, the quality of your success is all about training. Archilochus said, we do not rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. <laughs> and Will Durant, when he was writing about Aristotle, he said that excellence is an art won through training and habituation. So it's our training and our habits that make all the difference in our lives, fellas. We have to, we must train for greatness, which is literally why I created the masterclass I have and the tribe, so that we could have a group of men who are committed to being their best selves. We could have all the best tools and the best training in place so that we have the resources to become our very best selves. Again, the goal is as a holistic man, to be, have the holistic optimization is what I call it, to be optimized so that in every important role of your life, husband, lover, father, leader, businessman, disciple, just man, right? Whatever those roles are, so you can be the best there. It all comes down to training. So those are eight things that we can implement almost every day as often as we possibly can that I promise if you do them and do them well, can have a major positive effect in your overall life. Reach upward and be the man.